Thank you for each one that has come this morning to meet together in song, in prayer, and in worship. I pray, Father, for those that aren't able to be with us, whatever reason. But bless us all, use us all. In my son's precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In the way of announcements, quite a few announcements we have for the month of of April and even going into May. 
So be aware of things. Uh, this coming week here in St. Tammany Parish, uh, there is no school until next Tuesday. Not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday on the 19th is when they go back to school. So be aware of that. So this week, they're out of school. Good Friday, of course, is this coming Friday. And of course, next Sunday is Easter Sunday. So be aware of that. Uh, for next Sunday, seeing where it is Easter Sunday, we will have only our morning worship service at 10.30 a.m. And we will not have Sunday school on uh, uh, next Sunday, so be aware of that. Uh, the, the 20th of April, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, we will not have Wednesday night Bible study, so be aware of that for those who come on Wednesday night. Now, this coming Wednesday, we'll have the same thing that we had two weeks ago, so be aware of that uh, because of, I'm not saying thunderstorms, but there is a of course, there's always a chance of rain every day, but of course, next week is they're calling for rain Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and especially on Wednesday, it's like 90% chance. So be aware of that. So um, unless I call you, but as of right now, we are having Wednesday night. Just as long as it doesn't say tornado warnings uh, and such as that, to where it would put people in danger uh, if they're driving on the street. Uh, on Wednesday night, um, so be be aware of that. So I just have to monitor the weather as far as on Wednesday when we do meet this coming Wednesday. So if you don't get a phone call from me, that means we are having Wednesday night Bible study. So as of right now, we are having it. We just don't know what this weather will do, seeing where we are and do have. Um, Tropical, I mean, not tropical condition, but very uh, severe thunderstorms that come around that, that do happen. And we have to be aware of that and not put people in danger as they're driving uh, to and from the church. So just to be aware of that. Uh, April the 30th, we will have a memorial slash a celebration uh, of the life of Danny Hall. And this will be at 11 a.m. here at Bayou Baptist Church. And everyone is is included in coming for that. Afterwards, we'll have a time of fellowship in the back. I would ask now that the ladies of Bayou Baptist Church and even the men that prepare some things that we can uh, have after the memorial service on uh, April 30th, which is a Saturday. So it's the last Saturday of this month. And uh, so, just so you know, so if you don't mind, ladies get together. Uh, there's no sense in making out a list because nobody ever signs a list anyway. Uh, but that way we can have uh, some food in the back for not only for, for everyone that comes for the fellowship and so forth. So as of right now, we do have ham and we do, and we are planning on doing some uh, Popeye's fried chicken, of course. And then everything else we can you can you can figure out from there. So just, just so you you know some things. So um, so anyhow, so if you don't mind, ladies, just y'all get together and see what all can be done as for as for as for as for that. So I would appreciate that. Uh, so we can do that. Uh, the last day of school here in St. Tammany Parish is May the twentieth, and that's a half day on that day. So be aware of that. Um, this coming week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, for those of you who take the Highway 11 bridge, uh, it will be closed from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. this coming week. So, so it won't be closed during the day, but it will, they will close it from 8 o'clock at night to 5, to 5 in the morning. So if you have to go um, to that way, say after 8 o'clock, don't use the Highway 11 Bridge, of course, this coming week. I think they're, they're, they're striping and doing some other minor things to it. Um, and so they're doing this one uh, at nighttime. So be aware of that uh, so you won't be caught off guard as far as, far as that part. We are collecting for uh, our Annie Armstrong Easter offering uh, for those who would like to give to that. 
We have collected $193 so far, and all that goes to mission work being done in the United States. So if you would like to do that, you can. Uh, next Sunday will be the last Sunday that we will be collecting uh, on Easter Sunday itself, so be aware of that. Also, let me share with you, for those of you who do come, uh, next Sunday, which is, of course, Easter Sunday, we will be observing the Lord's Supper uh, at the end of the worship service as well for all who come and all who are saved and born-again believers. You can come and celebrate with us uh, on Easter and also observe the Lord's Supper uh, as far as on Easter Sunday itself. You can always find us on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. Any other things we need to be aware of or maybe something we may have overlooked or we just need to know what's going on in our area? Clarence, is there anything else going on or going around for the emergency uh, from your end perspective? Uh, not really. We don't have, uh, when it comes to COVID, we're not doing any vaccination or testing just because of the lack of interest. Okay. Of course, we prepared for hurricane season because it's right around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Bummer. And you did hear the report, right? Excuse me? You yes. did hear the report on that, huh? <clears throat> yes. It the wasn't one, good. The one from uh, No War is not out yet. But yeah, one, no, it's not out, but out. they did say it's, no, it's, it's high because of what is it, the El Nino thing? La Nino. La Nino, yeah. So we're under, so they're, they're anticipating a very high season, unfortunately. But as we know, it can be high, it can be low, all it takes is one. So you just got to start preparing it. And I would tell you now, prepare now. Don't wait until July or August or September, you know, when you, or when you see one out there. I would do whatever you have to do and prepare now. That way you won't be running around like a chicken with his neck cut off trying to find something. Uh, it's either batteries that they last a long time, or if you have to get updates on your flashlights, or if you have to check out maybe your generator that you have, check it out now. Don't wait until it, it's, it's in the golf and then you can't find nobody to, to, to work on it. So. Make sure your generator, if you have one, make sure it's working now. Do it now beforehand. And that way you, you've got everything and, and just make your list of things that you may want to prepare for. And I would tell you, do it now as far as that. Um, if you uh, make sure you have uh, enough empty gasoline containers. Not plastic bottles, but things that you can put gas in that's appropriate for your gas for your generators. Make sure you've got enough empty ones of those, so that way if you do have to get gas for it, you know, you'll have the containers that you need. Even that, yes sir? Uh, also, you know, with the conditions right now, with the humidity so low and the wind blowing like it is, just be aware that it's season to start fires. There was a fire in Pearl River just this past Friday and it destroyed about 80 acres. Wow. So okay. just be aware of that for right now. Okay, yes. Even though we're going to be getting rain this week, it's still very, very dry out there. And you're right, because of the wind, it doesn't take much for that fire to jump from point A to point B. And that our fire, even though it's back there, it can also jump on your house as well. And so you need, you need to, yeah, appreciate that, Clarence, as, as far as with that. So just be aware of everything, and I know we, I know we all do it. We all wait to the last minute to do things. But if you can do it ahead of time, you'll be ahead of the game, and you'll be, you'll, you won't be as stressed out if we do get anything. So hopefully some of this will help. Let us continue then as Al comes down, and he'll lead us in another hymn, hymn number 141, The Old Rugged Cross. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
possibility and he is how old again 15 15 years old so we want to pray for Landon Brown with 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 that and what's going on with him uh, as far as that and where is he right now he lives in Slidell okay he so he's at home right now yeah okay so he's been treated at St. Jude okay 
All right, so so pray pray for him uh, as far as that, as far as what's going on, uh, as far as with that. So we will keep him in also in prayer. Uh, again, pray for the many others we have on our prayer list. Candace, who does have cancer as well. Remember her in prayer with her treatments and what they're doing with her. Uh, Leon, Leona Moon, continue remember Le Leona, uh, Lenora, remember her in prayer. She's still having issues with her leg. Uh, she still has to see a doctor and get the rod out that she had in her leg that's moved and so she is having a tough time of getting around. So pray for Leon, Lenora Moon in prayer. Uh, so remember her in prayer. Uh, Johnny and Debbie Garrett, of course, uh, pray for, for them. De Johnny with his ongoing treatment and his battle with his cancer. Uh, Debbie with her mom and sister and other family members, uh, both sisters, Beverly and Wanda, uh, in, in Kentucky. So pray for them and remember them in prayer. And when do y'all head back to Kentucky? Saturday. This coming Saturday? Yeah. Okay. So pray for them as they will be heading back to um, Kentucky for that time and uh, be, be with mom and the family and all, so pray for them for traveling mercies as they go that way. Uh, pray for our city, our state, our country, our leaders, and all that's going on. As always, pray for the situation between Russia and Ukraine and what's taking place out there and what's happening as, as all that is taking effect to, on not just them but everyone throughout the world, so pray for that situation as well. Um, again, just different people on our prayer list, just pray for them, remember them in prayer. I ask you to continue to pray for my daughter, Melinda Burgess. Uh, she still has issues with her, um, her, 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 her with herself. She has, uh, she may have fibromyalgia, is that right? Uh, yeah, so... Uh, so she's maybe dealing with that. It's better when it's warm than when it's cold. It, it, this affects her nerves and, uh, and the feelings as far as with everything. Um, but she is seeing a doctor as far as with that, is, with that issue. So she has good days and bad days. I'd ask you to pray for Melinda uh, and the family in prayer as well. Other prayer requests, concerns, Thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us today. Ms. Brandy. As some of you know, I, I do have a bunch of half siblings. Um, my sister Denise, her husband Steve is suffering from cancer. He has tumors in his brain and in his spinal cord. Okay. And it's it's looking pretty pretty okay. bad. For so instance, remember your sister's husband. My brother. -in -law, Steve. Yes, his name is Steve. Okay, so remember him in prayer as he has. Cancer in the brain. Okay, we sure will. She has sure. children as well as. So. Okay, yeah. Also remember Shell Armstrong back there. She continues to have issues with her eyes. It's doing sometimes it's better and sometimes it's not. And but she still has some issues with that, um, as far as other health issues as well. So we want to continue. Remember Shell Armstrong also in prayer. Other prayer requests. Johnny Garrett. Yeah, Frank. Uh, Johnny's mother-in-law, Arlene. Arlene? Yeah. Okay. Uh, her last name, Montanero. That's okay. Anyway, she's, uh, uh, she's had a uh, pain pump installed in her back, and she gives continuous pain injections. Right. And they think that something's wrong wrong with the pain pump, and so she's in real bad pain. Ooh, okay. And so okay. And my niece, Jordan, was in a car accident uh, last week. Ooh. And, uh, She's got a rod in her back, but they thought that the rod had been shifted because she's having back pains. And that's apparent, and they checked it out, but thankfully the rod is in place. Okay. And she's having another back pain. Sure. Okay. Okay. So. And Debbie's other sister, Patty. Uh, that's right, she's having surgery. Or she had surgery. Going to have. Going to have. Yeah, surgery. Yes. Yes, yeah. Patty's going to have surgery on her legs. She's had issues with her legs. So they're going to need a vascular thing, right? Yes. So remember, remember Patty or Patricia in prayer as well. Yes, appreciate that. Yes. When is the surgery? You know? She told me last night they're hoping they're still waiting on insurance, but they're hoping the 18th. Okay. I think that's a Monday. Okay. okay. Income tax day, 18th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, income tax day is the 18th now. Yes. 
Okay, so remember these people, Elaine and Jordan and, and Patty and Prayer, and of course you. I, what did the doctor said? You went Tuesday, right? Yeah, things aren't as well as they could be, but it's still, let's keep going. Okay. Where we're at right now, let's just keep going. Okay. All right, we just want to continue remember you, okay? Remember y'all, okay? Other prayer requests. Debbie. Just remember um, my friend Rachel, she is a, well, she was a nurse at Slide Memorial. Um, she lost all, she could not walk last week. And she went numb all over her body. And she's at Slide Memorial Hospital right now. They did a spinal tap last night, and it looks like she has that Gilligan bar. <coughs> they say they think she's contracted it from a virus. And Sadie went and saw her last night, and they're going to start her on a powerful IV treatment for five days. And then, you know, she'll have to go through physical therapy to learn, you know, to be able to walk. And um, but she's a she's a very young woman, yes. single mom. Wow. And I don't think she has any siblings, and her okay. parents aren't in great health. Right. So right. just remember her in prayer. She's really scared about what her future holds. Sure. You know. Evidently, she went to Slaughter Memorial three times last week, and they just kept blowing it off, telling her it was stress. Right. They gave her pain medicine just for body aches. Sure. And then it then it, got, it progressively got worse where she couldn't walk. And okay. After the neurologist saw her, you know, they were just shocked at what was going on. Okay. So just remember her in prayer. We'll do. We'll do. Remember Rachel. Okay. We'll do. Other prayer. Linda. Um, remember my grandson, Jay cousin, his girlfriend of 40 years was killed Friday I-12. She was an LSU student at the back of the truck. Was that the one? Yeah, oh, right there. Yeah. Yeah, and oh. she's having a really hard time with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We'll do. We'll do. And a prayer of Thanksgiving. Okay. My car has been broke for about two weeks off and on and I finally got it fixed. <laughs> oh, good. That's good. And today's Mia's birthday, so if y'all see Yes. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Yes. She's in the back. Yeah. Well, we tell her happy birthday. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So, okay. We sure will. And how are you doing since everything? And how are you making it up? Good. Okay. Still cleaning out his room. Okay. All right. I know. I know. I know it's got to be hard. Or eight bags. I didn't know he had any clothes. They wore the same thing over and over. And yeah. yeah, I got. Um, I know it's hard going in there, not you know. Yeah, that's, it's hard. Every night I go in. Yes. Time of the night I, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. But if he's anywhere, he's going to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> he loves yeah. his room. But uh, okay. yeah, it's rough cleaning it up. Sure. I got rid of his bed and stuff like okay. that. But it's um, it's kind okay. of a I'm doing good. I'm not crying every day like I was before. So. Right. Okay, but just remember you're all in the family, and, and how, how's, how's Felix? He's still about the same. He's oh, I'm sorry. He's back. He just oh. wants to sit in his recliner and yes. watch TV all day. Oh. He used to be outside work in the yard and pedal and yes. go down the road and see his friends at Tizers, okay. and he hasn't done any of that. He's just been hanging out in the house. Okay. Remember Felix in prayer. Sure. And he's super taken care of. Yes, absolutely, yes. He's got her own ailments. <laughs> Other prayer requests. Concerns, say he's giving. Whatever you like to wear, give it. I tried. Sarah's got a problem with her leg, and she's going, You're going to see another doctor, aren't you? Yes. 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 Yeah, you're going to see a vascular doctor. Yes. Okay, so remember you in prayer as well. Thank you still you still swell up on you, huh? Yes. Yes. So remember remember you in prayer. We sure will. Yes. Yes. Other prayer requests. Uh, prayer of Thanksgiving. Good. To, uh, good to see Miss Karen back there. She she had an episode, and uh, I don't know if she just got jealous, but she had to go to the hospital last week, and and they gave her a clean bill of health, other than a, what a pulled muscle. How's that pulled muscle now? Doing much better. Good, good. Well, prayer thanks, and we want to continue to pray for you, and and hopefully everything will be okay. Other prayer requests. What you got, Jen? Just continue prayer, pray for each one of us when I get younger. What? <laughs> Why do you mean we're not? No, uh, oh, we're man. not. Uh, Gee. We're at Thanksgiving also just for, to be able to be here at God's house. Say again? We're at Thanksgiving to be here at God's sure. house on yes. Sunday. And 
Right. Also praying, I pray for all the lost. Absolutely. And family. Yes. And all around. Yes. Know. Yes. And traveling mercies for all the people who, are, who will be traveling or traveling to Sandy and and and, um, and Abby. They're traveling from Mississippi. Uh, they had to do something today, and other people will be traveling, especially this week as well. There'll be a lot of traveling going on this week with a lot of kids out of school and everything. Um, traveling mercies for Johnny and Debbie as they go ahead up to Kentucky, so we do remember them in prayer. Um, traveling mercies also for us, the family. We're going to be going the day after Easter. We're going to be heading up to a place that Ginger doesn't want me to go to. A quick visit's all right. Oh, quick visit's okay? Yeah, okay. Okay. She said it was okay. So I'm going to go up to the mountains. Uh, and with the family thing, it's going to be Debbie, myself, uh, Melody, Megan, and Michael. So all of us are going to be going up there for just a few days, and then we'll come back. Uh, while I'm there, I'm going to be seeing Joe and Brent Frazier. Many of you remember Joe and Brent Frazier. You were here for a while, and she was our pianist for a while. But I'm going to get with them one day, and we'll talk to them. And they're doing fine, too. Tell them we would love for them to come here. Yeah, they, they do. Sometimes they sneak up on us and they come, and they don't tell us when they're coming. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, they, they do that. Um, so, yes. But anyhow, so I'll get to see them one day, um, week after next, so Lord willing. But, uh, pray for that. Again, just remember the different people on our prayer list, and pray for each other. And as was mentioned, pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Pray for those who are not with us this morning for whatever reason, um, whether sickness or whether something else has come up. Remember them in prayer as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, as we come at this time, Lord, we lift up all these prayers, all the concern, the many, many things that are going on in all of our families. We pray for family, friends, loved ones, and other people, and so many, many people, Lord, who are dealing with different health issues and health problems. Some here, some at home, some in the hospital, and even all the patients and the people in the nursing homes. We pray for the many, many people, Lord. There are so many who are dealing with different health issues. And we pray for your healing power, for your help, for your grace, for your mercy, uh, and for your will in each and every one. Where death has come, Lord, we pray for those who are hurting and grieving, and Lord, we just pray you comfort the many who are hurting and grieving over the loss of, of a loved one. We pray again, we lift up the many, many prayers that have been voiced here this morning, and be with each and every one. You know the needs, the hurts, you know the problems. There are so many that are going on and taking place. Traveling mercies for those who are traveling and will be traveling. Watch over them, help them, and be with them. As always, we pray for the many people who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They may know about Jesus, they may have heard about Jesus, but they themselves have never made a profession of faith or have asked Jesus to come into their heart and their life. And we pray for them. We pray, Lord, that you'll open their hearts, their ears, their eyes. I, we pray that they'll come to know you and that, Father, you'll work a mighty miracle in their lives as well. We pray, Father, for others as well. We pray for our country, our leaders, our city, our state, and many others as well. And what's all going on throughout the world, what's taking place in Ukraine and Russia, and how it affects not just them, but everyone throughout. And we pray for the, for, the, for the state in which our land is in at this point and at this time, and we pray for one another. We pray now, Lord, that you'll be with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us in all that we do. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and are doing. Continue to be with us and help us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Let us stand at this time as Al comes now and he'll lead us in our offertory hymn, hymn number 142, There Is a Fountain.
this time, Lord, we thank you for your many, many blessings. We thank you for seeing to our needs, for helping us, for being there with us and helping us, Lord, as we journey in this life. We come now and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. And just ask, Lord, that you will see to it that all is collected, that it's used for the furtherance of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel. And Lord, may you bless both the gift and the giver in the name of Jesus. Amen. morning, turn if you will to Matthew chapter 27, looking at verses 45 to 56. Of course, this being the week before Easter, we're looking today at the death of Jesus the Christ. We'll read about his death on the cross and in a place that was called, at a place called Golgotha, which means the skull. Now, at this point where we pick it up from Matthew 27 and verse 45. Jesus had been on the cross now for some three hours. He was placed on the cross at 9 o'clock in the morning, and now it is high noon. Prior to noontime, he was mocked and ridiculed by the religious leaders, as well as by both the thieves that were nailed on the cross, one on his left and then one on his right. And yet, during the course of, before, during that three-hour period, one of the thieves, we don't know which one, whether the one on the left or the one on the right, one of the thieves came to know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And he requested of Jesus, said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus gave him an assurance and a guarantee. Today, you will be with me in paradise. And that came because he, I believe, and even though I know it doesn't say it, he repented of his sin because he told the other thief, we were doing wrong, we're getting what we deserve because we sinned, we did wrong. But this man has done nothing wrong. And I believe the, that thief did repent, and he put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And so we, we have that episode that took place. Now, meanwhile, while Jesus was on the cross, Judas Iscariot, the one who was with Jesus for three years, saw the miracles, heard the words, even the private instructions that the disciples got, he too got. He heard it all. He was there. And yet, Judas Iscariot never came to know Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. He betrayed Jesus, as we know, for 30 pieces of silver. So with those 30 pieces of silver that he thought would bring him happiness and joy, instead it brought him sadness and heartache. And so he took the 30 pieces of silver and he gave it back to the high priests and the religious leaders and threw it back into the temple. 
and then sadly went out and hung himself. And that's the sad part about it because I really feel he didn't have to. All he had to do was the same thing Peter did, repent of his sin and ask the Lord for forgiveness. And the Lord will forgive because the Lord is a Lord of compassion, grace, and mercy. But he hung himself. And with the 30 pieces of silver, the religious leaders didn't want to have anything to do with the money because they considered it blood money. They brought a potter's field with it, and there he was buried. So three hours on the cross here, as we're reading it now, he's been on the cross since 9 o'clock, and now it's high noon. So he's been on the cross now for three hours with nails in his hands and his feet. And in order to get, in order to breathe, what they have to do, if you don't know much about it, is they have to lift themselves up in order to get a breath because of the expansion of them. So they're hanging there with two nails, one in each hand and then in his foot. And then to, to, to get up, they have to stand, get up every now and then to get a breath. And so there he is with nails in his hands and his feet. And unlike the other two, Jesus has a crown of thorns that was recessed into his head. I'm going to say, not just on his head, they recessed it in there until blood came dripping out of his head. And Jesus, by divine purpose, was dying on the cross as the perfect Lamb of God for the sins of all people, of all walks of life. Regardless of who they were, does not matter, white, black, red, yellow, it did not matter. He went on the cross to die for all the people. True, he came for the Jews, but his death was for everyone and for all who put faith in him. And so let us look at what took place, just some of what happened here during the last three hours of his life on the cross, coming from Matthew chapter 27, and in verse 45 and not following. First of all, notice the darkness that took place in verses 45 through 49. It says, from the sixth hour until the ninth. Now, the sixth hour is noon. Okay? So, from 12 noon to 3 p.m., there was darkness. And notice how the darkness was. It says, over the whole, over all the land. Now, I don't know what, and when he wrote this, what that was encompassing, whether it was all the land, everywhere, or just in that area, we don't know. But it says that darkness covered all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, la sabatine, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, when some of those standing there heard it, they said, he is calling Elijah. Immediately, someone, one of them, ran and got a sponge to fill it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick, and offered to Jesus a drink. All the rest said, hey, Leave him alone. See, they're still ridiculing him here. You see, he's still kind of making fun here. Oh, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah does come to save him. And so we, we have this thing. So again, what does darkness represent? In many cases, if you go back and you look, maybe in the Old and even New Testament, darkness usually represents evil or something, something satanic or similar things that are like that. But not so here. This darkness has nothing to do with satanic thing or anything the devil here is doing to make everything dark. It is, and, and here it's high noon and Jehovah God has caused all the land to become dark. Now if you go back again in the Old Testament you'll find out that usually when it's associated with God, darkness equates with judgment. The judgment or the wrath of God coming. And it's usually that. And now what we see here is the divine judgment of God and the sins of all the world are going to be poured out purposely and divinely on the sinless perfect Son, Jesus, by the Father. All the sins. All of them. Every one of them. And here we see He was going to be the sacrificial Lamb 
as the cross now becomes the altar and Jesus the sacrifice, the ransom for us. And I, and I think later Peter told the people right when he wrote his epistle. And in 1 Peter chapter 2 and in verse 24, he related to the people as well as to us. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. Now the tree is a cross. Make no mistake about it. So that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. You see, so this is what here is happening and taking place at this point in time. Then the disciples didn't understand what was going on. None of them. But yet later, by inspiration of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, revealed to them exactly what took place and what was happening. And so we see here, as, 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 the, as darkness is everywhere, Jesus cries out. He cries out and is somehow trying to put it in your perspective. God was separated from God. He was still God, but yet he was separated from God the Father. God the Son separated. For the first time, he felt the separation. Eloi, Eloi, la sabatine. Why have you forsaken me? For the first time in existence, and he always was, there was that separation going on. Now, Jesus did not cease to be God, nor did he sit, uh, cease to be the Son. You know, just like you have children, and sometimes, you know, we, you know we, we're not happy with our children or whatever, or sometimes, you know, even when they do things wrong, they still our children. They still our son, they still our daughter, even when they do things wrong. But here Jesus didn't do anything wrong. But still, he didn't cease from being the Son. But he did cease in a sense, to know the intimacy of the fellowship with the Heavenly Father that he had known since the existence of everything. He was there in the beginning when everything was created because he was God. He was there. And here he is now. And here we see that it's as it's if Habakkuk was writing and coming from the Old Testament in Habakkuk chapter 1, and as it says in verse 12 and following, O Lord, are you not from everlasting? My God, my Holy One, will you not die? O Lord, will you have, a, you have appointed them to execute judgment? O Rock, you have ordained them to punish. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? And we know he doesn't. They will get their just due and their reward. But here we see that all the sins that Jesus here was, as he was dying, many people want to believe that Jesus died a martyr or that he died basically as as an innocent man, and he was an innocent man. You could say he was a martyr, but you know it was much, much more than that. It was much more than a martyr or an innocent man being wrongly accused and condemned. No. What we have to understand at this point is that Jesus was dying a sub as a substitute <coughs> sacrifice for the sins of the world. A divine appointment. This was divinely appointed at this time and purposely at this time as well. Remember, Jesus escalated this appointment or escalated it to where it was done during the Passover time because he was the Passover lamb. See, the Jews were waiting until after the Passover to have him killed. But he by divine intervention and by the hand of, God, of himself as well as the Father. They did it during the Passover time because he was the Passover lamb. 
and it was going to there for the sin, and all of all of our sins was being placed on him. And so that's why it also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and in verse 21, it says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You see, Jesus was sinless. We're not. We're sinners. And we need cleansing. And the only way we can get cleansing is by the blood of Jesus Christ and what he has done at Calvary. Such an awesome thing that he's done. Judgment for sin was now being proclaimed. Darkness everywhere. And you know sin is dark. And Jesus was the sent lamb. This particular one. And you remember, it had to be a perfect lamb. One without defect, one without spot, nothing wrong with it at all. You know, in a way, the Pharisees and Sadducees and religious leaders, they got it right when they told them they had to come with a lamb that was without defect. But another way that they, they misused that and misdid things, and they were right. And so here Jesus is the perfect lamb. And why? Because he was indeed perfect because he is God. Imagine, if you will, God himself coming down from heaven and dying on the cross for us. For us. Amazing. And here, what we see happening is God is that Jesus here doing the will of the Father and bringing glory to the Father by doing his will, but also saving mankind from their sins. Redemption draweth nigh. Such an awesome God that we have. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. Such an awesome God that we have. Don't make so little of what was taking place at Calvary over 2,000 years ago. This was divinely, this was purposely appointed for our good. And Jesus voluntarily doing this as well. Then we see the death of Jesus as, it, as there's darkness now throughout the land. Notice what happens here after he says what he says. And they bring this sponge and thinking he's calling out to Elijah. And then when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtains of the temple were torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rock split. The tombs broke open. And the bodies of many holy people who have died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. Amazing, isn't it? Now, when the sin of darkness was upon Jesus and everything was poured upon him, what did he do? He surrendered his spirit. Jesus did not take his own life, no, but willingly gave up his life to pay the penalty of our sin. He did it freely and willingly. He surrendered his life for us. And what was also said and was also proclaimed by the religious people as well, unknowing to them that they were prophesying concerning this very thing that Jesus was doing. You see, in John chapter 11, and in verse 49 and following, notice what one of the high priests said concerning about Jesus because they rejected him as, as a savior. Notice what they said and they prophesied. Then one of them named Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, he spoke up. Do you not, you know nothing at all. Don't you realize that it is better for one man to die for the people than the whole nation to perish. Now, he did not say this on his own, 
But as a high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation, and not only for that nation, but bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they had planned, they had plotted to take his life. But again, they prophesied about this. It's better that one man die for the whole nation. That's what Jesus was doing. His death was for the nation, but not only for Israel, but it's for all who come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. For all people as well. And, 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 notice, and notice at the time of his death, the other miracles that took place. The veil of the temple, when it was rendered from top to bottom, not from bottom to top, but from the top to the bottom, signifying that now, because of his death, we can approach the throne of God, of God ourselves. That we can come before God, and we can place before him all of our requests, and God hears them as well. The earth shook, the rocks split, tombs were opened, bodies of the saints were raised, and after Jesus' resurrection, they went out and they appeared to many, many people throughout the places. Why all these miracles? These were no coincidences. This was no illusions or accidental things, but these were divine happenings, divine miracles in which God the Father was proclaiming that the cross on which the Son was dying had accomplished what man could not by his sacrifices. And that is eternal life and also hope for eternal life as well that is found in Jesus Christ. The wrath of God was appeased. And every believer and every person who puts faith in Jesus Christ can find hope in eternal life because of what Jesus Christ has done at Calvary and there on the cross. And also because of his death and his atonement, again, as I mentioned, we can now go to God in person and to all who believe in Jesus Christ, we too, like the saints here who have been raised, we will be raised to a life in heaven with God forever. Such an awesome thing our God has done at Calvary. This was made possible because of his death on the cross. Had he not given his life on Calvary, none of this would have been possible. We still would have been trying to find a way to gain God's favor as well as eternal life. For you see, no good works. We can't do enough good works to get to heaven. The Bible says, by grace you've been saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Such an awesome thing. And, now God, and God knew this, even before he created us. He knew it. This plan that we see here was devised even before God created the world and everything in it. The mind and the awesomeness of our God. And then we have the declaration that took place after the death of Jesus Christ as he gave up voluntarily his spirit. And there he was on the cross, dead, slumped over. And what happened when they saw it? This is an awesome thing. It says in verse 54, when the centurion, a Gentile, and those with him were, who, were guarding, who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened. They were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Jose, and also the mother of Zebedee's sons as well, James and John. But we also know that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was also there as well. And so here we see, we have this exclamation, this declaration that has been so given by this Gentile centurion, a man who was there the whole time, from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. He, he saw or 
Should I say he heard all the words that Jesus had said while he was on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It is finished. Eloi, Eloi, la sabatine, and many other, maybe other things that he said as well. But he, he heard those words. He saw what took place. He saw the ridicule, the mocking, maybe even join in, who knew? But he also, he saw the other things as well. And shaken and frightened. And he wasn't shaken and frightened by the darkness. This didn't alarm him. He didn't say nothing about the darkness or the earthquake. What alarmed him and what frightened him is the manner in which Jesus died on the cross. He saw it. If you, if, you, if, you, if you look at it, and if you really look at it, it says, when the centurion and those with him, guarding him, saw the earthquake and all that happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the Son of God. Sure, they, they saw the, the earthquake and they did all of this. But I think it's the manner in which everything took place and all, everything that had happened as well. And so in here, we see that he knew that this was not just something that was an ordinary person. And his death was indeed by divine power. And so he testified to all of that was because indeed he believed that Jesus was the Son of God. Now this is a bold declaration coming from a Gentile. He's not saying that this man was Jesus the prophet. But he's saying he was Jesus the Son of God. Over in Luke's account, in Luke chapter 23, it goes to something of this nature as to where Luke here records it in, in, verse, in chapter 23, verse 20 and 47. He says, The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who gathered to witness the sight saw what took place, they beat their breast and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who followed from Galilee at a strange distance, watching these things. Amazing, isn't it? Of what took place that day. If you notice, to the people, it was no longer a laughing matter. It was no longer any ridicule or mocking. But it was a sign to them that, indeed, what they had done was killed the Son of God, the man belonging to God, and that God's judgment and wrath was there. Thus, he believed that Jesus was indeed who he claimed to be all along. Remember now, for three years he's been telling people, I am the Son of God. I am the Messiah. Even latter part, when they ask him, are you who you claim to be? Even when he was with the even when he was with the religious leaders and he, and he arrested him, he said, as, as you have said, I am. And they, and they proclaimed him to be a blasphemer, claiming to be some a man who is God. And indeed, he was. And so, indeed, he claimed to be, and when his claim, he is the Son of God. Understand, all that was done to Jesus on the cross there at Golgotha, was not just someone who died as a martyr or an, as an innocent man, but it was a divinely purpose of God to redeem fallen man from sin. And Jesus, by his death on the cross, accomplished what no one else could do, and no one else could ever do, or would ever do, by his death on the cross. And that is by his blood, we are cleansed and we are made whole because of what he has done. And to all who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, not just intellectually, but Jesus Christ is here in your heart, where you said, Lord, come into my heart and into my life. For all who truly believe in Jesus, that person can truly find redemption and salvation. And one day, one day, walk the streets of heaven with all of the redeemed, not because of any good things they have done, but because of what Jesus Christ has done 
at Calvary. Such an awesome God we have. The question today is, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Today you can have that opportunity. You can come before him and ask Jesus to come into your heart, into your life, repent of your sin, and he would. And you can have eternal life. And like the thief on the cross who said, remember me when I come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Or today you can know Jesus Christ and have eternal life. And that's the assurance that this work on the cross has done to all who believe in him as Lord and as Savior. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come down, if there's any whom you have, whose heart you have opened, whose mind you have opened, whose ears you have opened, whose eyes you have opened, and they are pondering all of these things, I pray that they will ponder it no longer, but that, Lord, they will give their heart and their life to you this morning, genuinely, and repent of their sin, and ask Jesus to come into their heart and their life, so that they, too, can have cleansing for their soul and also eternal life. And we pray this for any and all who are here, or any and all who are listening, in the name of Jesus. Amen. If God has spoken to you today, you come as we sing hymn number 135, Nothing But the Blood.
We invite you to come back if you care to on Wednesday night if we have Bible study from 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, food and fellowship from 6 to 6.30. All invited to come for that. Hopefully the rain won't cancel everything out. Uh, but if not, we invite you to come back next Sunday. Of course, next Sunday, of course, is Easter Sunday. All are welcome to come for that. And we're only going to have morning worship service from 10.30 to 11.30 or quarter to 12. And during the time of our Easter service, we will also be observing the Lord's Supper during that time as well. So all are welcome to come for Easter. And join us as we celebrate and as we remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. His resurrection always, uh, also meant our resurrection as well. And we can thank the Lord for that also. May God bless and be with each and every one. Again, pray for the different people who are going through difficulties or whatever may be going on in their lives. Pray for them. And as I mentioned, always pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ and the real meaning of Easter. Now, lead us in closing prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you thanking you for all that you've done for us. I thank you for each one that has come to meet with us to worship this morning. I pray, Lord, that each one that's here did receive a blessing and that Father knows where they stand in life. Know, Father, whether they're going to be with you one day or not. Pray, Lord, if anybody here does not know you as Lord and Savior, that at least, at least the seed was planted, and the Father, that seed will grow. Again, I pray for those that aren't able to be with us, whatever the reason might be. Bless them, let them know they in our prayers. Be with us now as we go out separate ways. Watch over us. Bring us back to worship again together. In my son's precious name.